there, it's Allison from Dreamweaver Designs, and this is Thinking Outside the Box. I have been missing in action for just a tad over a year now, and I am back. Um, a lot has happened, as I'm sure a lot has happened with many of you as well. So I'm not going to get into personal stuff, but I am back, and I will be posting free tutorials again. I don't know the frequency of them, um, but I will be posting, and I'm trying to post strictly quality uh, tutorials. So things that you may have not seen, things that I have kind of stumbled upon while experimenting, and stuff like that. So today, the tutorial is polymer clay and achieving like a faux dichro effect to the polymer clay. And it all started with this piece here. And it was simply by accident that I came across this effect. I was actually experimenting with something totally different and it went in a opposite direction and this is what I came up with. And it is like super, super simple. So I wanted to share it with you guys and you can just create really stunning pieces. Um, this piece here, I have turned into a pendant but you can finish these pieces however you want. Um, these can be earrings, pendants, you know, buttons. You can make buttons. There's just so many different things you can create. So I'm gonna go ahead and get up, uh, get the supply set up, and I will be back to show you how simple this technique really is. The supplies needed to create this effect are black polymer clay. Now, as you can see that this is the Craftsmart Michaels polymer clay, I actually like this clay. Um, I don't know if any of you have tried it. It is very comparable to Primo in the sense that it's very strong once baked. I have had no issues with it. I've been using it for months now. Primo has been kind of hard to come by and I do have a little bit of a stash that, you know, when I'm doing experimenting and stuff, I don't want to be using, you know, my good stash. Not to say that this is not good clay. This really is good clay. Um, so I would check it out if I were you. It's like, I think, $13 for a pound, one whole pound, which is a really good deal. And it's in abundance right now. The only thing that you may find is if you're a caner, it is a very soft clay. So, you know, you will have issues doing canes with it. But for, you know, pretty much anything else, it is a wonderful clay to use. Um, I like the fact that it is soft, which makes it a little stickier, which for certain things you want a stickier clay. So that being said, you also need cutters of your choice and a stencil of your choice. And this is a stencil that I've used before in tutorials. I will have a link to everything um, in the comments, be, or not the comments, but underneath this video, I will have a link for everything so that I used in this video. But you can use, you know, whatever stencil you want. You're gonna need some sort of a soft brush. This is from the Heart Supplies Brush on UV Resin that I have put in an empty, UV gel polish bottle. That way, when I go to use it, um, it's, I have a built-in brush. So basically that's all that is. I just took it, took a little funnel and poured some in there. I also like to keep this resin in my fridge because it makes it a little thicker when I'm using it. Um, some people have issues with their resin um, going off the edges and you know, maybe spilling and that will help you. But this is not a doming resin. This is a brush on UV resin. And then of course you're going to need mica powder powders. And these are the powders um, that I've been using. Uh, they It says RJ Crafts on there, but it's actually from the Heart Supplies. Uh, Rhonda used to be RJ Crafts 
and they changed the name to from the uh to from the heart supplies. So I will have a link for all of that. And then this will be the texture sheet that we'll be using as well. And I will have a link for that also. So I'm gonna go ahead and get set up. I'm gonna condition out some clay and then I will show you exactly how I achieved this look here. All right, there's just a couple other things that I neglected to mention in the supplies needed. Um, if you want to dome your piece, you're going to need something to dome it on when you bake it um, to give it a little bit of a curve. And these are just round. Um, I don't remember where I got these. You might be able to get them off Amazon. I'll check and see if there's a link for them. But they're like the supposedly, I haven't tried that, but I just use them for my clay. They're supposed to take the, like if you cut up fish or cooked fish or whatever, and you use this, they're stainless steel. So if you use it under running water, water, it is supposed to take the smell off your hands. I've not tried it, so I don't care to try it. I just like it because I can dome on it. And what else? Um, you're gonna need some sort of a piece of plastic to work on. Uh, you don't really need it. You could use paper, but I like to use this. And you are going to need um, just a piece of white copy paper, which will help you to burnish your piece. So we're going to go ahead and get started. And I'm going to lay my plastic down onto my craft mat. And... I like to get it as, because um, this sticks, this is a silicone craft mat, so the plastic likes to stick to it really well, which is good. And then I have that nice smooth area to work on. So the first thing I'm gonna do is burnish my clay. And I'm just gonna take a piece of paper and rub it lightly over my clay. And what that's doing is it's giving it a nice, flat, smooth surface. I rolled this out to a number two on my pasta machine, machine which is uh, number two is the thickest, second thickest setting. Now we are going to take our stencil and make sure this is clean from the last time. And you're going to go ahead and place it down on your clay. And because I did a small piece of clay, I want to make sure that I line it up correctly for where I want to cut it out. Then you're just lightly going to burnish that on. So you're doing it just so the stencil sticks to the clay. You don't want to, at this point, bring the clay up from behind the stencil, like if you were to take a piece of paper and burnish hard on it, that would give you texture. We're not looking for texture. We're looking just to get this stencil on here so it's on there lightly and it won't move around on you and the powders won't get up underneath it. Now what we're going to do is decorate. And I like to start with the turquoise teal and I'm just gonna put a little bit on my finger and I am going to lightly put it on whatever area you want on the stencil. Now, if you can tell because I did not push the stencil down into the clay, my finger, when I put this mica powder on there, is not going all the way to the edge because the stencil is raised up. So my finger can't get it all the way to the edge. That is part of this technique because our last color that we're gonna use, I want to actually outline where, the, uh, where this color is not getting, if that makes sense. <laughs> You'll see when we get there. But you just want to go ahead and put this on 
you know, wherever you want it. And you're just lightly using your finger and putting it on there. Now we're gonna go with another color. And I think the next one we use, we'll use some purple since purple is my favorite color. And I'm just dabbing my finger in there and then tapping it off in the lid. And once again, you're just putting it wherever you want it. And the reason I dab it off in the lid is then when I go to put it down on the clay, it's not, um, you know, just one big clump there. It kind of evens it out on my finger. All right. Now that that's on there. Now you can use as many colors as you want. You don't have to use all of these colors and I'm not going to use all of them on this one. But I do want to, you know, add a few colors in there just to give it kind of a rainbow effect. So I think I will add a little bit of this orange coral. Is that? Yeah, orange coral. Just a little bit here and there. And I think I also want to put some blue in there. And I will use, um, let's see. I think for this one, we're gonna use the bell bottom blue. I used the Caribbean blue on the other one, but I wanna try something a little different on this one. So. Just filling in. I think we'll just go ahead and fill in the rest of the spaces with the blue. Because we're going to do the edge of these with our last color. Oops. So Get a little bit of that in there. All right. Now, I'm just wiping my finger off over um, off camera with a baby wipe. Now, we are going to take our paper and we're gonna just burnish lightly. And what that is gonna do is it's uh, going to get that mica powder onto the clay. And remember, you're not gonna do it hard because we're not looking for texture. So it's basically just rubbing it, burnishing it into the clay so it's sticking a little better. Now we're gonna use our last color and that's where our brush comes in. And this one is called Siesta Sunset. And what you'll see when I use this color, hang on, I see a couple spots that I would like to make purple that I missed. So I'm gonna go ahead and burnish again. All right. Now what I'm gonna do with this, and to the best that I can, is apply this to our edges that we didn't get up to with the mica powder. Now that's not gonna be 
totally easy. Um, I'm taking this and, and getting most of the powder off of my brush, but you're basically just going to try and hit just the edges. You're, you're not gonna be able to hit just the edges, but that's okay. Anything that gets muted too much, you can go back over with, you know, another color to bring that color back that, you know, might've gotten muted. But I really like the way, and you'll see how this looks once you put this sunset mica on here. It's going to get along the edges, but it's also going to change, kind of mute your colors a little and give it more of that dichro look. So let's see, make sure we have everything. So if you want these colors to be a little brighter, you can go back with, you know, each particular color and hit it again with that, which I may do. But first I'm gonna burnish lightly to get that sunset on there. And I'm also going to just go over it with the brush like this. All right. Now, if I want to bring back more purple, let's say, you know, I really muted that purple out, I really don't like that, you can certainly open up your purple and go back in there with some purple and rub it on there and bring that uh, purple out more. You're not gonna lose the yellow on your edges because you're not gonna be able to get up to those edges. So we're bringing back some more purple. And let's say we want to bring back a little more turquoise too. And we can do that. Although the turquoise is still a little strong on there. Um, but it is just a tad muted. So we'll just add a little more. And now I'm going to go over this with my brush and get the excess off. And now the very last step is before you pull your um, stencil up, we want to get that texture to make it look like the dichro crystals. So I'm just gonna place my texture mat right on top and push that color or push the uh, texture in. And I usually just go over it twice. You don't wanna go over it too much, um, but you do wanna make sure that it has texture. And now it looks totally different. So now you're gonna go ahead and pull off your stencil. And you're going to position your cutter to where you want this cut out. And I think we will go with something like this right here that gets a lot of that purple and turquoise in there that I like. And push down on your cutter. Then I like to just give it a little bit of a twist, not much and pull up. Then you can pull away your excess and you're left with your circle. Now the reason I leave it on this plastic or why I worked on this plastic, because for me, it's easier to get it over to here without distorting it. So you simply pick your plastic up and let me bring this up to the camera. Once you get your resin on this after it's baked, 
it makes the colors pop. So it doesn't look like all that much right now, but afterwards, like the exam the sample that I showed you, it really makes those colors pop. All right, so now we are going to get the clay off of our sheet and it's just that simple. No distortion at all. And I'm just gonna go ahead and put it down on my circle. And you will just put this in your oven and bake. This clay, I bake just like Sculpey Primo, and I bake it at 275 for one hour. So that's all there is to that. Now here is my baked piece. Looks identical to where I put it down onto here. This is now cooled. And what I'll do is uh, clean up my edges and then go ahead and use my from the heart supplies brush on uv resin and put it under a uv lamp to cure if you're interested to see i'm not going to do this on video because i do have a detailed video on how to um how to resin pieces that polymer clay pieces when you're done so there's no point in doing that. I'm trying to keep these videos short. So that then, once resined, becomes this. And that's how the colors pop. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that you found it helpful. Please like and subscribe to my channel. Click on the bell for notifications when I do post. I am going to definitely be posting more than I have been lately. Um, and I just, you know, I wanna take this moment to thank everybody who has reached out to me to see if I'm okay. Um, your words of encouragement and your thoughts and your prayers really, really, really means the world to me. Thank you so much um, to all of you. Thank you for being subscribers to my channel. You know, I don't, I don't know what else to say, but a big hug to all of you. I know we're all going through strange things, tough things, hard things, things that we shouldn't be going through. So my thoughts and prayers go out to all of you as well. Thank you so much for watching this video. Stay to the end and I will show you some close-ups of all the pieces that I created with this faux dichro effect. Thank you again. Have a great week and until next time. Bye-bye.